What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another video lesson. This week we will check out one basic trick or theory concept that will improve your guitar solos drastically and it personally worked wonders for me over the years. This kind of knowledge and approach to composition is not very common in rock and metal music and will make your shred guitar solos stand out for sure, so let's get started right away. So for this lesson I made sure to record a practical example once again to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I recorded a basic backing track with a very common chord progression in B minor and played two different takes over that. In the first take I did my best to demonstrate the very common approach of just thinking in one or two scale positions in the key you're playing in and basically just playing as fast as you can to impress the listener, while in the second take I was accenting each chord change melodically with my scales and arpeggios to make the solo more interesting. So let's listen to these two takes first and check out if you can hear any difference. So to me there's a huge difference here, the first take sounds like a mechanical exercise while the second one sounds much more musical but it's still impressive for the listener and still qualifies as a classic shred solo. My biggest goal with this lesson is showing you that playing fast and technical can also sound musical and creative and that's what I tried to demonstrate with the second take. As always the PDF tabs and guitar profiles of what I just played are online on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Bernd. This time I also made sure to upload a longer version of the practice backing track I was playing over so you can try out some of the licks yourself. A quick disclaimer before we analyze each bar, of course I still love alternate picking phrases like the ones I played in the first take. <laughs> But as soon as you get comfortable with your alternate picking technique at fast tempos, it becomes very dangerous to play the same patterns over and over again. That way it might end up sounding like a warm-up exercise for the listener and that's what I tried to demonstrate with the first example. So first of all let's check out the chords I was playing in the background. I started out with a very basic voicing for the tonic B minor. I was just playing the power chord, so B and F sharp and then I was adding F sharp on the bottom too to get this kind of sound. It always sounds a little bit more powerful than just playing the perfect fifth. Up next we move up to G major. For this chord I was also playing a basic voicing, the power chord, and then I added the ninth on top for a open and wide kind of sound. Also sounding more interesting than just playing the perfect fifth. We already looked at this voicing in the jazz chords in metal episode a couple of weeks ago. Up next we move to D and once again I included the ninth E on top, the open E string. So it has a similar quality to, to the other chords. It sounds pretty cool and very open as I said. After that the same approach for A major. I was just playing the power chord and once again adding the perfect fifth on the bottom, the open E string, which sounds pretty cool and might sound like I'm using a lower tuning here when you're playing chords like that, but it's all just in standard tuning as always. Up next for the last chord something interesting is happening, I'm playing a dominant seventh chord that introduces a lot of tension before we resolve back into the tonic. So F sharp with the minor 7th and major 3rd. But in the key of B minor I would actually have an F sharp minor or F sharp minor 7th chord on the 5th scale degree. But I'm raising the minor 3rd to a major 3rd to get that satisfying 5-1 cadence in the end. So that is a little harmony trick right here to make the cadence a bit more interesting. But I don't want to talk too much about chords right now since we already talked a lot about that in the last couple of weeks. Let's get to the solo I played. So here's the main thing I want you to understand before we move to the individual licks that I played. Music is usually composed in a key as you probably know. For this backing track I was working within the key of B minor. 
You can form the basic chords in every key by stacking the 3rd and 5th on each note of the scale by only using notes you can find within the scale. So if we do that in the key of B minor real quick, we would get B minor on the 1st scale degree or tonic of course, then I move to C sharp diminished, D major on the 3rd scale degree, E minor on the 4th scale degree, F sharp minor on the 5th scale degree. As I already said, we exchanged that to a dominant 7th chord to make the resolution back to the tonic more satisfying. Then I move up to G major on the 6th scale degree, A major on the 7th scale degree and then I'm back at B minor. So those are all the basic chords I have available in the key of B minor. If I would put them into a completely random order and play all of them over and over again, it would sound like a function in harmonic system, but some cadences sound better than others. We will get to the reason in a different lesson. So since I'm forming all of those chords completely out of the notes I have available in the B minor scale, I could technically just play one scale position of B minor over the entire track without paying any attention to the changing chords and it will still sound kind of good and it will still work. So instead of thinking about the chords that are changing all the time and the notes within them, I could just play something like... and so on, but it kind of would be a shame because the cadence sounds really cool and melodic and I'm not really accenting any of that in a solo like that. So what I did in the second take is not just think about it as this one thing in B minor, I was accenting each individual chord change and I was paying a lot of attention what kind of notes I'm playing. So what I did for the first chord, instead of just going completely crazy already, um, is I was playing the root, added the perfect fifth, just like in the chord, but then I was moving up to the ninth and the minor third, which is one of my favorite harmony concepts because we get a lot of cool tension that brings out the sound of the B minor chord and adds more notes to the voicing that I'm not already playing in the chord, like the ninth and the minor third on top. So the first phrase was something like that, I think I started with a slide. So a pretty cool dissonant kind of uh, arpeggiated vibe, but the notes are overlapping, so I get this kind of rubbing dissonance. Up next I was still not really thinking in the scale, I was accenting the next chord, G major, or just the power chord with the ninth on top. So for this chord I was just accenting it in a very basic way again, I was playing the root note G, the major third, perfect fifth and the octave. And this kind of position allows me to do something like that. So a pretty cool pattern using sweep picking and hammer-ons and pull-offs. And to make it a little bit more challenging, I was also adding a tapped note to make it sound a little bit cooler and to add some variation to this lick. So I was playing something like that. And that does sound pretty crazy and fast, but you still hear the sound and characteristics of G major, since I'm playing the notes of that chord, and it's not just a random scale phrase over the chord. Up next I was taking a short break as a small reminder that you should also include vibrato and bending phrases in your solos to make them a little bit more emotional so to say. For my example I was using a semitone band, which is a little bit more tricky than it actually sounds because a lot of players are overdoing this band because it's just a super small distance, just a semitone, so we don't want anything like a distance between a whole tone and a semitone. It has to be well articulated and of course we have to hit the right pitch. So that is very important here. And then I finally introduced my first real scale phrase and to make it more interesting I was working with a legato and hybrid picking approach. I think I was playing something like that. So I was using my middle finger to get that smooth kind of legato sound. I don't want the listener to really hear the transitioning between the different strings and that helps me a little bit here. And then to top it off I was just playing arpeggios for A major. So basically just the free string shape 
we talked about a lot before for A major. And then I was using a little theory trick for the dominant seventh chord because I can also exchange that one for a diminished voicing. So I was just playing the classic ascending shape, ending with the root note B and a little more bending and vibrato going on here. So that's pretty much it concerning the basic thought process behind the composition of the second take. As I said, the guitar profiles and PDF tabs are online on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Bernd. I really hope that I could inspire you to think in a similar way when you're composing your guitar solos. Pay attention to what's going on in the background, accent the chord changes and think a little bit about your phrasing and the notes that you are playing. And I'm sure the results will be very cool. So if you have any very detailed in-depth questions or need some help with your own compositions, just hit me up on Patreon or you can also leave a YouTube comment. I try to answer as many as I can. Also make sure to subscribe in the end to join this YouTube community today and leave a like if you enjoyed the video, learned something new. That really means a lot to me. I will see you in the next lesson video. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. All the best and have fun practicing.